All right. Good morning, everybody. I um, I hope you can hear us. We'll we'll get starting. But firstly, thank you for joining us today. Uh, and then the aim is we're going to share with you um, some technical details and advantage is of Bayer Esplanade. So um, my name is Nick Hutchinson. I'm the sales and marketing manager from Fernland, and we join on via Zoom with Yuri Carpro, Matt Leach, and Paul Crap from Bayer who are going to hold the presentation and give you um, a lot of technical data and some information and advantages of Esplanade, which should take about 35 to 40 minutes. There's plenty of technical information that's going to be available too for everybody to um, listen to have and explore any questions that you may have. Please save your questions to the end where we'll have a, a Q&A session. Um, there is a chat box that's available through Zoom as well. So if you think of anything that you want to put through on that, please do that and then we'll get to that at the end as well. Um, we will get all of your details or we've got most of your details and we'll be sending each of you an Esplanade show bag which contains some technical info that we would have talked about, a safety vest, uh, a hat, a pen and a notepad and thanks to Bayer for supplying this and then what we'll do at Fernland is we're going to offer you a 15% saving on three different solo sprayers so that's the 456 which is just a five litre professional sprayer a 475 which is a 15 litre knapsack sprayer or a 417 which is an 18 litre 12 volt rechargeable knapsack sprayer but that, that's available to all of you so look i will jump off and i'll introduce you to matt leach and matt's going to start with the presentation and then yuri will follow through with a bit more technical data as we move through so thank you all guys and, and matt over to you thanks nick um hey everyone my name is matt uh i'm the uh territory manager for bayer vegetation management in new south wales queensland and the northern territory uh, i'm based in queensland which is uh handy for i would say most of the guys on the call today because i can um come out and visit you if you um would like me to if you need to ask any questions we can go and look at the sites um stuff like that um, but yeah, the aim of today is really to introduce you guys to um, a new herbicide, pre-emergent herbicide for specifically designed for vegetation management. So um, yeah, focus today really is, um, or the focus for Esplanade um, is, is one is railroads, so rails, um, crossings, uh, roadsides, uh, industrial sites, so bare ground, um, substation factories, wind farms, solar farms, airports, all of the above. Um, but with, we, when it comes to Esplanade as a pre-emergent herbicide, the idea is to um, uh, minimise, minimise, oh, sorry, you could you just go back one for me? Thanks. Um, it's a long-term residual, um, you know, that that promotes really promotes the growth of warm season grasses um, in areas, in in some areas as well as also uh, bare ground control if if applied with uh, a knockdown such as glyphosate. Um, when it comes to railroads, what we're looking at is controlling the um, potential risks, so visibility in crossings, um, bushfire potential, so overhanging. Uh, vegetation across lines or lines that are close to to uh, the rail and then also rail infrastructure so um, you know the the booms the boxes uh, you know minimizing the amount of times that crews have to go out and spend uh, maintaining these these areas um, we can reduce those risks with uh, with Esplanade as it um, it's, it's quite effective it delivers a broad control um, and it's another tool when it comes to resistant management. So when I mean um, uh, it delivers a broad control, we've got 30 
30 odd weeds on there at the moment um, that, that Esplanade covers. Uh, it's also a really long, long lasting control. Uh, similar, similar situation with roadsides. So we're looking to really maintain the infrastructure on the sides of roads, uh, visibility, uh, is a big one, obviously, with, when it comes to safety uh, and, and flooding. Um, again, we're minimising those risks by ensuring efficacy, improving the roadside warm season species um, and allowing long season, long season control. Uh, when it comes to the industrial sites, so factory substations, wind farms, solar farms, airports, uh, maintenance facilities, uh, again, we're looking to yeah, maintain the infrastructure lifespan, so minimise minimise those invading weed species on those areas, minimise the amount um, crews are having to go or contractors are having to go out and maintain those areas. Um, and, yeah, so, yeah, if you could go to the next slide for me, Yuri. Uh, this is Esplanade, so... Esplanade comes in a handy one litre pack, so it's one litre bottle, sorry, so it's easy to um, carry around with you um, and store. So Esplanade's a 500 gram per litre loading of Indazaflam, which is the active. It's an SC, so suspension concentrate, very low use rate, so 150 mils per hectare. Uh, so you get about 6.6 .6 hectares to a bottle. Um, and with that as well comes the added benefit of only putting out a very minimal amount of active um, into the environment. So you're only putting out 75 grams of indazaflam per hectare. Um, rainfall, it, 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 it's non-volatile, so it's UV stable. So you can apply Esplanade and, and um, it won't degrade in the environment for quite some time. So you've got, you've got several weeks uh, before you need the rainfall required to activate Esplanade in the soil. And again, it's a residual pre-emergent um, weed control product. Uh, it's, it's a group O, uh, which is a cellulose biosynthesis inhibitor. Uh, if you could go to the next slide for me, Yuri. Uh, and what, what that means is, um, it, it, to put it simply, it, it basically, um, it's, it stops the plant from really uh, reproducing those, those cells. Um, Indazaflam is the most effective CBI discovered so far, uh, generally used as a pre-emergent CBIs. Uh, Indazaflam inhibits crystalline cellulose deposition in the plant. Um, I'm sure Yuri will be able to go into that further for us. Uh, it has little effect on developed leaves and other tissues. So you, this, is, this isn't the product um, that is going to control, control weeds that are already present. Um, in situations. If you go next slide, Drew. Some use situations. So as I, as I mentioned before, those non-crop areas around buildings, commercial industrial areas, public service areas, rights of way, rail tracks, roadsides, guide, guideposts, all of the above. Um, really good in uh, council situations where you're looking to minimise glyphosate uh, use if there is pressure from uh, from the public to do that. Um, another use situation is low maintenance grass areas, so roadsides or airport runways. Um, it, you're really going to minimise the amount of weed vegetation that is that is growing that can also bring in um, things such as birds and insects into that that area, um, which you really don't want in airport situations. Uh, it's also forestry registered, so pre and post plant applications. Uh, next slide for me, Yuri. Sorry, Matt. There we go. There you go. Um, yeah, so just to wrap up uh, my section of the, the presentation. Um, Summary, yeah, Esplanade is a pre-emergent herbicide. It's a, it's a new mode of action to the Australian market. Very low use rate of the 150 mils uh, per hectare. Very broad spectrum control of grasses, broadleaf weeds and sedges. Uh, long lasting six month control. Um, we're, we're looking at yeah, spring and autumn applications to control those summer and winter weeds. Non-staining, low odor, 
uh, safe on trees. Uh, and there is a dedicated vegetation management team now with Bayer, which is myself, Yuri and Paul. Um, and Bayer is always uh, on the front foot when it comes to innovation, um, especially in this new space, vegetation management. So um, thanks for listening to the summary of, of Esplanade. I'll hand over now to, uh, to Yuri to go into more of a, a technical presentation and some trial results. Okay, thanks, Matt. Um, so I'll, I'll run through some trial results in the remaining time and a few te technical aspects on the product, I guess. It's, um, it's, it's an ongoing process. We by no means have finished our trial work and um, looking at, at the label and the registration. So um, I'll sort of highlight some of the areas that we're still sort of looking into with this uh, product. Um, so as Matt indicated, um, it's, a, it's a product, a residual herbicide with little knockdown. Uh, I'll talk a bit more about that shortly. But uh, a residual herbicide to, to give you long-term control to stop, especially annual weeds, whether they be grasses or broadleaf weeds, um, from germ germinating and establishing. Um, so here's a photo from um, from Canberra, where we've uh, had a long long-term trial, seven months after treatment. Their standard practice is currently to use simazine, as you can see on the right there at seven months. The, uh, the herbicide's broken and the, and the weeds have germinated, ryegrass and satirias and things like that, uh, compared with on the left where the Esplanade's still giving good control at, at seven months. Uh, as Matt indicated, it's registered for a range of weeds and uh, what part of what we're still doing is trying to expand this, this list of weeds. And you know, you need a lot of trial work to get weeds on the label, so it's a, it's a ongoing pro process. Uh, but you can see on the left, there's a, a range of broadleaf weeds, and on the right, um, grasses, sedges, and um, and there's a rush there as well. So, in terms of sedges, it will control annual sedges, which will grow from seed. It will not grow those uh, control those sedges, which uh, uh, control from from the uh, the nuts, corms, and bulbs, and those types of um, reproductions that, that some plants have. So, you know, things like nut grass, onion weed, um, it will not control those. So, it's, um, it's plants which will germinate and establish from a seed in the soil. Um, this is a trial that we had done at the University of Adelaide where we looked at the post emergent effects of Esplanade. On, uh, on grasses and in this case we're using ryegrass because we had seen some results on very young uh, plants which had, which had recently germinated. So we set up some pots where we applied the esplanade to pots before germination. So that's the pre-emergent. Then we applied it to plants which were uh, already germinated at the one leaf stage and then another pot with uh, plants at the three leaf stage. And then we had uh, plants at the, at the tillering stage. So these two pots, you can see the, um, the pot on the left is obviously the untreated. And the one on the right is the, the one treated with Esplanade. And I think there, was, there were three replicates of all these. So it wasn't just the pots you see there. Um, so obviously pre-emergent, full control, on, on that ryegrass that's germinated at the one leaf stage. Um, very good control on those young ryegrass seedlings. Once we get up to three leaf stage, it's certainly set back the ryegrass, so you're getting significant suppression, um, but the plants are still alive. And then um, likewise with the plants which were at the one tiller stage, again, we've obviously had significant suppression of the plants, but um, they're, they're not all dead and um, are likely to so survive, but certainly has set them back. So there is some post-emergent activity with Esplanade um, and it, it, it varies. There are some broadleaf plants that it does control very well as, broad, as a post-emergent, but mainly it is a pre-emergent herbicide. One thing that we do see in areas treated with Esplanade, if we do get escapes, um, and this was a situation where we had extremely heavy rainfall wash some 
debris and soil and seed into an area that uh, had been treated with esplanade. And as that seed germinated and the plant started to grow, the roots were effectively uh, you know, sheared off. And so the plant you can see on the right, it, it did germinate and established and it was still growing well because of the high soil moisture levels. But um, you could imagine once you go into dry condition, that plant is really going to struggle to survive with it, without any root system. Um, so use situations, uh, Matt's already sort of covered these, but uh, I'll just give you a few more examples. Um, so those non-crop areas, those industrial, um, in Dazaflam or Esplanade does have safety on, on a lot of established grasses, especially C4 warm season grasses. Um, so we can use it in grassed areas to, to prevent the establishment of weeds. And then the forestry situations, uh, Matt's already mentioned. So another picture from a, a roadside trial. This is in New South Wales. And um, you can see the top part of that photograph sprayed with um, Roundup and Esplanade compared with the, the bottom of the photograph, which was only sprayed with Roundup. And um, as we've had the autumn break, weeds have germinated in the area that was only treated with, with Roundup compared with where we've got that residual product in the ground uh, giving good, good long-term weed control on a range of, of grass species. Um, so yeah, guidepost is one one place or you know any kind of infrastructure, whether it be buildings, um, infrastructure around roads, railway, um, yeah, railways, um, where we want weed control. These are areas which are, you know, weed control is if you're doing mechanically, it's intensive work with a whipper sniffer or, or something like that. So um, a product that can give you long-term residual control in those situations. Um, can certainly save a lot of time and money. Um, the railways is one of the more significant um, markets for, for Esplanade where they need long-term weed control, you know, that risk of, of starting fires and of, of um, being able to see, um, you know, dangers on the railway line and so forth. And, and for people who are crossing the railway line, being able to see trains is extremely important. So. Um, the bottom half of the photo you can see treated with esplanade compared with the top which hasn't. So we've had all that grass germination up in uh, Bundaberg in Queensland. Um, just show you a couple of graphs, uh, quite detailed information. So I won't go into all the full details on this but again just to give you an indica indication on this product. So done in northern New South Wales, this first one, um, and what we're looking at is percentage grass cover in this trial on a fence line trial. A whole suite of different treatments there, which I won't go into. Um, but this is at nine months, the percentage grass cover. On the left, you can see the untreated control at nearly 45%. And uh, the pinkish column there is the esplanade. So, you know, 4% or so of grass cover at nine months. And then on the far right, we've got a treatment of Esplanade plus a new herbicide that we're working with called Method, um, which is still a little way from registration, but at nine months, you can see um, zero weed infestation. So uh, that combination's looking very promising at, at this stage. And um, same set of treatments, but this time um, thistles on a, on a fence line trial, again, done in, in Tamworth, um, New South Wales where we're getting you know, close to 95% um, thistle cover at nine months. And um, again, highlight the Esplanade there at a, at a few percent, maybe eight, nine, 10%. Um, and again, on the far right, this uh, combination with the new product we're working with as well, um, giving very long-term residual control. Um, and the fence lines around sports fields, um, with, with you in conjunction with Roundup, um, this is Kaikuyu mainly. Uh, you, you can see where Roundup has been sprayed in the top part of that photograph. The Kaikuyu's colonised come back in as well as a heap of different weeds. There's some crow's foot in there compared with that uh, bottom panel, which has had the Roundup and Esplanade treatment in four months after application. You know, no mechanical weed control needed there. Um, along that fence. 
Um, so we've done quite large demonstration trials uh, after we do our small scale trials to get registration. So um, at the um, solar farm at, at Brisbane Airport, um, we've had uh, excellent results in a very heavily weed infested site with Esplanade um, plus Sulfometron, which goes under a whole heap of different trade names, but can give you some um, post and pre-emergent control as well as Roundup. So yeah, trying to control that vegetation around and underneath those, those solar panels. And uh, on the right, again, another fence line trial, this time at Melbourne Airport, with the same combination of, of three products, um, giving you good control. And that's one thing we sort of emphasize in terms of resistance management, this is a new mode of action group for these situations. So it's beneficial in that way, but um, for long-term resistance management, tank mixing, different modes of action is quite important. So you know, putting that sulfometer on in there as a, as a different mode of action, um, which gives pre and post activity is a, is a good resistance um, strategy, resistance, resistance management strategy. Um, and uh, forestry situation. So Esplanade has good safety on established plants, on established trees. Um, these are young blue gums planted in, in South Australia, which have been planted into soil that's already been treated with Esplanade and Sulfometron. So with, with eucalypts, which are you know, tube stock quite small, we can't spray over the top because we do get some burning. Um, but if we treat the soil first and then go in there and plant, it's, uh, it's quite successful. Uh, as opposed to pine trees, which you can see on both sides of that photo, um, pine trees, we can spray over the top with Esplanade with, with no problem. So um, we can do that, use it either pre or post planting on, on the pines. Um, and an area that, that we're doing more work is in is where we want to maintain a perennial grass cover, whether that be sort of passive areas, uh, airports, uh, but we want to keep the weeds out. So in this photograph, you can see on the right, it's been treated with Esplanade and we've got a range of perennial grasses in there. On the left is a um, infestation of an, of an annual grass called Vulpia plus a whole heap of broadleaf weeds. They're probably a bit hard to see in the photograph. Um, but yeah, again, six months down the track, so quite long-term long -term control. Um, and, and related to that work is, is things that are happening in the United States um, where there's quite a bit of work being done in the control of invasive annual grasses, which are getting into what the Americans would call rangeland situations. And this is part of the problem of the big fires in California at the moment is that these um, grasses uh, produce a lot of fuel, um, which when when, when it dries off is uh, extremely hazardous and um, yeah is one of the one of the reasons that they've got these major fire problems so in that photograph you can see all the brown grass which is a, a broma species an annual uh, grass that hasn't been controlled with the with the esplanade which has been applied on the right and you can see the, a whole lot of different um, perennial grasses and forbs that have come in there and um, effectively restore the ecosystem, if you like, so sort of a natural regeneration. So we, we're doing a bit more in these natural areas here in Australia as well, trying to see what kind of benefits we can we can get. Um, and this is some of the work that, that, that's been done in um, sort of, um, yeah, the remnant vegetation, which is now suffering from, um, from uh, invasion, invasion by weeds. So just to give you a couple of examples, in, down in Victoria, um, the remnant bushland, which has been overrun by a, an annual grass called built grass, and that's the limey green colour that you can see in the top part of that photograph, um, which wasn't treated. The bottom was treated in a trial, and um, you can see that there's none of that uh, annual grass, and the, those green grass plants there are perennial grasses, the native grasses that we want to keep in this remnant bushland and you know, not seeing any 
detrimental effects on, on other native plants either. Um, this is a native grassland down in Victoria again that they're trying to maintain as a, as a native grassland situation. And um, the green plot is the area we treated with Esplanade and the surrounding area is uh, heavily infested with annual grasses and, um, and, a, and a broadleaf weed called cape weed, cape weed. And um, so yeah, it's been extremely effective and gives some hope to restore these native grassland, grasslands back to what they should be by keeping out the, the annual weeds. And I think there's maybe one or two more examples, similar kind of work. Um, this one's in, in remnant bushland in, in Adelaide. And the middle section of that photograph hasn't been treated. Both sides, left and right, have been treated. And in the middle, that fine green colour is, is an annual grass again coming in and um, producing a fuel load as well as you know, competing with those native species that we want to keep. And I think this might be one of the final ones, similar kind of thing, grassland situation, native grasses we want to restore. The bottom of the photograph hasn't been treated and a lot of germination of invasive weeds compared with the top, which has been treated with, with Esplanade. Um, so in terms of plant tolerance, generally um, we have good safety on trees and shrubs uh, and on established forbs, perennial plants. Perennial warm season grasses have good safety to, to Esplanade as well as plants which are established from bulbs and, and similar. Uh, we're doing quite a bit of uh, screening on, on native and ornamental plants at the moment. So looking at um, the use of Esplanade in situations where we're planting these types of plants. So we're both doing field trials, um, as you can see on the left there. The left hand side of that left photo has been treated with esplanade, so very little weed control and we've sprayed over the top of those plants so they, they haven't been affected. And then we're doing a lot of pot work, which is you know, it's much easier to screen ornamental and native plants in pots. Um, we're not recommending this product as a treatment for pots, but uh, it's, it's a way of, of screening for safety. So quite a range of ornamental plants, there's a lot of roses by the look of it, but yeah, we've Done um, doing doing a lot more of that, and that's an area we're going to be expanding into. Um, I've talked a bit about resistance, and I'll just add add a bit more to that. Um, so, again, at the University of Adelaide, um, this organisation called Plant Science Consulting did some work for us. They they do a lot of resistance testing um, from various samples around the country. So they have a like a bank of seed with various, various um, resistance problems, resistance to a whole heap of different uh, herbicides. So they screened um, some ryegrass that was resistant to three different types of herbicides, group A, B, and group M. Uh, group M obviously being uh, glyphosate, uh, as well as fleabane, uh, res resistant again to glyphosate, and, uh, and feather top rose grass resistant to, to glyphosate. So three pots there, you can see the, um, the ryegrass that's germinated in the untreated compared with the one, the three pots where it hasn't. So that ryegrass does have resistance to three different types of herb herbicides, but it is successfully controlled by Esplanade. Uh, and similar with the flea bane, you see the germination in the untreated pots compared with the others, where you've got control. And, and finally, the, uh, the feather top rose grass, which is a, a significant problem in the northern parts of the country. Um, uh, on, from northern New South Wales onwards, I guess. Um, yeah, you can see um, significant uh, control, full control on that um, biotype, which is, which is resistant to, to glyphosate. Um, so, our ongoing trial work is to expand the label in terms of add, adding other, other weeds onto it. Um, we're looking at tank mixtures, uh, A, from the, from the point of view of compatibility to make sure that there's, there's no problems, but also the resistance management. And this is gonna be one of the, well, it already is, but it will be you know, a big issue going into the future is um, how, how do we manage for resistance and tank mixtures with different modes of action is certainly 
can be a major strategy for, for managing resistance. Uh, and then safety on native species, so certainly native grasses, as well as uh, other native plants like lamandras and, and so forth that are used in a, in a whole sort of different uh, planting situation before we get those mass plantings. Um, so we're just doing screening at the moment and uh, we've got some further work planned to, to look at that. So that, that's where we're heading at the moment. Um, so our website has got a lot of information and uh, some of that information will come to you in, uh, in the, the pack that's going to be sent out. But uh, yeah, if you want to follow up, there's um, quite a bit of information on, on the website. And I think we come to the end and we'll take, um, take questions if people want to unmute their microphones. Um, the, the, the vegetation management team does have a Twitter handle. So for those people who might be on Twitter, that's the, the Twitter handle there, if you want to sort of keep up to date with, um, with what the team's doing. All right, so I don't know if there's any in the chat box. I haven't had a look, but uh, if anyone's got a question, please, please fire away. Yuri, first, uh, thanks very much, and Matt, thanks very much. I'll, I'll, I'll happily um, kick off with a, with a question. Um, just one of the questions we get asked, obviously, because we've had um, Esplanade for a while that we're showing to our customers at the moment, is a question normally is, is around the environmental impact, and Matt alluded to at the start of the conversation, because there's there's so little of the active used in terms of the enviro in, environmental impact. It's 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 pretty good. Is that right? Yeah, it's you know I I think of this product in terms of what it does compared with what's been out there before. It's like a, like a like a quantum leap. It's the, the amount of active ingredients seventy five grams per hectare compared with products which have been used in to do a similar kind of thing, we're talking about kilos and kilos and kilos of active ingredient per hectare. So it's just a, yeah, a major uh, evolution in, in terms of what the chemists have been able to do. So that, that's, that's definitely a benefit. Um, and, you know, it's, yeah, it's got a lot of, lot of safety benefits. So from that perspective, it's, um, it, it, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's a good environmental product. Cool. And then when, if we, obviously, because we're using so little of the active, that then goes on a, a, another question that we get asked is the cost. So I, I think when I looked at it, the cost equates to just a, just over a hundred bucks uh, per hectare for four to six months control. That's about right, isn't it? Uh, look, I'm on the technical side, so the cost okay. of the product doesn't come to mind, but someone else will jump in there, I'm sure. Matt or Paul, do you want to jump in on that one? Yeah, that, that's, that's correct, Nick. It's, uh, it's, it's just on $100 per hectare. Um, so, yeah, you, you're right. So, so, so both environmentally and, and cost-wise, it, it, ticks, it ticks a lot of the boxes that people would be interested in. Yeah, and, and Nick, I would be very disappointed if you only got four months control. So, um, you know, perhaps if you're in the northern tropics and you're getting five, six metres of rainfall and so forth, yeah, it, it might shorten down to, to, to four months. But, uh, yeah, you should be able to get significantly more than that. Uh, interesting, Yuri, that actually the, looking at uh, this, the first time I've seen the presentation with some of the results that are seven and eight months after it's, it's been applied. So... Yeah, I, I will change my thought process on it into yeah. the positive feedback. Yeah. Yeah. There's, all, there's obviously a lot of factors that go into how quickly um, a herbicide then breaks down in the soil and um, microbial activity and soil moisture and temperature are key ones. So it does vary from where you are and your conditions, but yeah, yeah, it is a long-term residual herbicide. Okay, good stuff. All right. I, I'd encourage anybody else, please, if you've got some questions to... We've got a good uh, a selection of Paul and um, Matt and Yuri that have a lot of knowledge between the three of them. I don't know if someone else can have a look in that chat box if there's something else there. It's just not coming up on my screen at the moment. 
No, there's nothing. Can I, can I ask a question? Sure. Just in relation to a bioactive, like the ground up bioactive, mm -hmm. compatible, compatibility? Yes, yep, no problem at all. So that's compatible with the Roundup Bioactive? Correct. Okay. I'll probably probably add to that. Um, it's, it's, it's a great tank mix, especially if you're looking for a bare ground uh, solution. Um, you know, for that first initial application, we would recommend tank mixing it with a, a glyphosate product to get the knockdown and then have the pre-emergent go down with it. Um, you'll find that following that first application, the amount of glyphosate that you'll need to use um, going forward will, will reduce considerably. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, I'm not hearing any more questions out there. So I don't know if I hand back to you, Nick, or. All right, yeah, look, um, thank you all again for uh, attending. I'd be keen to um, understand if anybody's got any further questions that they want to ask and, and you can email us at sales at fernland.com.au. Um, we have made a recording here as well. So we will email it out to everybody. So if there's anything they want to refer back to in, in Yuri and Matt's chat, they'll be able to look that up. But as I say, email us or give us a call. We're more than happy to um, answer any questions. Um, and we'll get those show bags sent out to you as well over the next couple of days. Um, and that will give you a bit more of reference. But on our website, there's information about Esplanade. Um, and then obviously, as Yuri said, there's a, there's a Twitter feed guys at Bayer who will be able to help you as well. So lot, lots of information available if you've got any questions. Um, and thank you all for, for joining us, Matt. You're thank, in you. thank you. That's all right. I'll just, I'll just quickly add as well. Um, again, um, I'm, I'm in Queensland um, on the ground. So if, if you'd like me to come out and have a visit, take a look around your sites, ask questions, all of the above. Um, just let either myself know uh, or one of the Fernlands team, and they'll, they'll get in contact. I'll come out and do a joint visit with them if you like. All right. And, all right. Uh, and thank you. Thank you to Fernland for uh, organising today. All right. Okay. Everybody have a good day. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.